number 58 will come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Remember our favor, lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening, Council is grateful to have Pastor Julius Lancaster of All Nations Worship uh, Assembly to pray with us. Pastor, welcome back to Council. Council President Hardin, Council Members, Directors, Ladies, Gentlemen, greetings from All Nations Worship Assembly of Columbus. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we come to you this afternoon with gratitude and thankfulness in our hearts. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for community, diplomacy, and democracy. We ask for your guidance, your direction, and your instructions. We ask for progress, protection, and peace. We speak excellence, efficiency, and effectiveness over this meeting. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, President Hardin. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Are there any additions or uh, corrections to the journal? Here, none. The journal is approved. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published by the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not this time. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's go around the dais uh, for any updates or resolutions, starting with Councilmember Bankston. Uh, thank you, President Harden. Just uh, um, one announcement, just another reminder about the ground floor growth initiative. Uh, we have extended the application to Thursday, November 30th uh, at 1159. Uh, again, the link to that application can be found on the city's small biz hub, which is cbussmallbizhub.com. And also you can um, check uh, all of our social media channels uh, for the council as well as myself to get more information. If you have any issues ac accessing the application or if you just have general, general questions about the Ground Floor Growth Initiative, please feel free to reach out to my office, JP Dorval um, at jpdorval at columbus.gov. Uh, and again, we're really excited about this initiative. So if you know of any businesses that would be a good fit, we are in the first phase of the application. And so uh, at this point in time, just taking those that are interested. So again, extend it to November 30th. Uh, at 1159 p.m. and you can find it on the Columbus Small Biz Hub. That's all I have. Thank you, uh, Councilmember. Councilmember Brosta de Padilla. Nothing for me. Sure. Councilmember Brown. Nothing for you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Press Pro Tim. 
Thank you, Council President. At this time, I would like to invite Laura Stervechka and her colleagues from the Albanian American community here in Columbus uh, to the podium as I introduce Resolution 0222X-2023 uh, um, to honor and celebrate November as the Albanian Heritage Month and the contribution of the Albanian American community here in our city. Uh, this council is pleased to join the Albanian Americans throughout Columbus in honoring and recognizing November as the Albanian Heritage Month on November 28th. Uh, as Albanian Independence Day. It was 101 years ago on November 28, 1912, that Albanian hero Ishmael uh, Kemali gathered delegates in Vlora, Albania, to approve the Declaration of Independence, and Albania restored its status as an independent country free of foreign invasion. The Albanian American community in Columbus uh, continued to bring their rich culture and tradition to our city as contributing members of their communities, successful small business owners, and distinguished professionals in respective fields. Over the past century, Albanian community and the city of Columbus has forged a strong bond with history in mind and look forward to the future uh, that we all can accomplish together over the next century. With that, I'd like to uh, invite Laura, who's here, to say a few words. Hello. Okay. Um, dear Columbus City Council, on behalf of the Albanian community in Columbus, I would like to express our sincere gratitude for declaring November as Albanian Month and for recognizing Albanian Independence Day. This gesture means a great deal in our community and serves as a testament to the diversity and inclusivity that Columbus embraces. We especially want to thank Councilman Dorns for proposing and supporting this kind gesture. By designating November as Albanian Month, you have not only acknowledged the rich cultural heritage of Albanians, but also highlighted the significant contributions that Albanian communities have made to the city of Columbus. This recognition fosters a sense of belonging and unity among Albanians. Which also, promote, which also promoting um, cultural understanding and appreci appreciation among the wider population. We are proud to celebrate Albanian Independence Day during this special month. It marks a historic milestone for our community, reminding us of the struggles and sacrifices that our ancestors endured to secure the independence of Albania. This important day serves as a reminder of the values we hold dear, such as freedom, resilience, and unity. We would like to express our heartfelt thanks to the Columbus City Council for this meaningful recognition. Your support and acknowledgement of our community's contributions and history will undoubtedly strengthen the bonds between Albanians and the broader Columbus community. We look forward to continuing to contribute to the growth and prosperity of this great city. We once again thank you for your invaluable support. Well, thank you, Laura, and I, I think I speak for my colleagues when I say one of our favorite things to do is to recognize uh, these types of anniversaries. So many people from uh, across our city come from far and wide and really put down roots here and uh, set up their families for generations to come, and I uh, appreciate folks reaching out to, to make this happen today, and I believe we'll be uh, lighting City Hall here in a couple of weeks in honor of Indep Independence Day as well, and certainly want to thank the mayor's office for, for setting that up as well to recognize. I don't know if my colleagues have any questions or comments about the resolution. Congratulations. Well, seeing none, I move for adoption. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favorimi, President Hardin. Adopted. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, thank you, Council President. That's all I have at this time. Thank you, Principal Tim. Council Member Favor. Thank you, Council President Hardin. Uh, this afternoon, uh, the Housing Committee hosted a, um, a conversation uh, to, to talk about additional housing measures that uh, this council is looking to introduce, as well as a policy uh, around our uh, incentive policy um, that the Department of Development uh, is looking to um, introduce as well this year. As a part of that conversation, um, what did come up was something that I wanted to acknowledge here uh, in our city council meeting. As chair of council's housing committee, I remain steadfast in my commitment to ensure that all people have equal access to safe and stable housing, especially for our most marginalized communities, including new Americans. I forcefully condemn the conditions in which residents of Colonial Village have been forced to endure. These residents deserve better. No family should live in a unit without access to heat or hot water, especially given the upcoming winter season. Throughout my time serving on city council, I've made it my mission to ensure that housing is treated as a fundamental human right. 
I do not waver on this goal and firmly believe that no matter one's background, they are deserving of a safe, stable, and quality place to live. As new Americans embark on a journey to build a brighter future within our community, it is our collective responsibility to ensure they find themselves in a safe space, one they are proud to call home. Columbus proudly stands as a sanctuary city, championing the inherent dignity of every individual, regardless of their origin. Ensuring safe and secure housing for all residents is a demonstration of our values of inclusivity and compassion. To dwell a little bit deeper into the city's response to the living conditions uncovered at Colonial Village Development, I'd like to introduce Hannah Jones, who serves as the Deputy Director of Community Development for a few remarks. Good evening. Thank you, President Hardin, President Pro Tem Dorans, Chair Favor, and members of Council for the opportunity to update you this evening on the work we have done. Um, I want to start by saying I would re be remiss if I didn't acknowledge all of the departments that have assisted in this effort, Building and Zoning Services, Recreation and Parks, Public Health, uh, the Department of Finance, because we can't do anything without the funding support, um, and numerous other staff, neighborhoods, the Department of Neighborhoods, for all really coming together to look at how best we can serve public safety, Sorry, the whole diocese, just thank you to everybody. Um, as you mentioned, uh, we do have a property that had been facing extensive code violations. Recently, we undertook a census um, to evaluate those units and at that time discovered that there were approximately 850 individuals who were residing at that property, of which the majority identified their country of origin as Haiti. Um, with that information, the city of Columbus quickly mobilized to engage with our community partners, including legal aid, the Community Refugee Immigration Services organization known as CRIS, us together, the Guadalupe Center, the Mid Ohio Food Collaborative, Franklin County Jobs and Family Services, as well as various health care providers to schedule a series of events that would allow us to engage with these families directly and connect them with much needed benefits and services. This past Thursday we, and Friday, we held two open houses. Through these events, we were able to serve over 280 individuals. We were able to enroll 52 families in WIC, offer 111 immunizations, distribute 83 car seats, enroll 15 new moms in home visiting, administer 96 medical exams, and also provide prenatal care for four um, expectant mothers who had not received any prenatal care up to that point. These are just the numbers we have at this moment, but I think they show well the magnitude of scale and the willingness of partners to come to the table. Um, and even in doing this again, I forgot we also had CCS there to enroll kids in public school as well. Apologies for that. While property management has been able to resolve all of the violations related to working smoke detectors, the violations for no heat remain outstanding for the most part. The Department of Neighborhoods has been coordinating the donation and delivery of blankets and winter weather clothing as we continue to see the temperature change in our community. For our initial relocation efforts, we have focused on moving families who are in units with no heat and have children under the age of one years old. We have begun the process of reaching out to those families to offer temporary housing options while they work with area providers through their legal immigration services. We anticipate submitting legislation in early December to City Council to allocate additional resources for a larger relocation effort in partnership with the County and the Community Shelter Board. And we will continue to prioritize the units with no heat that house children, seniors, and those with health issues. I thank you in advance for your consideration of this legislation as well as the City Council's support in these efforts and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Do any of my colleagues have any questions? Council President. Thank you, uh, uh, Council Member, and thank you to the department and chaired this earlier during the hearing, but all the partners who've come together, we, we're really grateful for um, the community coming together to, to solve, um, uh, to, to patch together a, a response to our new residents um, that are here. Um, I asked this earlier, what do we see as our um, uh, response responsibility in this time what is the priority in terms of safety security for these residents and how long do we see that that lasting this first initial engagement uh, in terms of, of housing sure I think first and foremost the priority uh, as the council member statement alluded to is to ensure that our families are in safe stable housing um, the units that uh, our code enforcement team was out inspecting were supposed to be vacant they have a range of issues and so for us it is how do we safely remove them from those situations in order to allow them to access a number of the services um, that they are seeking to engage with here in the United States so if they are in an asylum seeking status 
this. We want to give them the ability to engage with legal aid with Chris and others to truly be able to um, meet what they desire to do in coming to the United States to access the ability to work, to access decent, safe, and sanitary housing. So for us, it's how do we get them out of the cold? How do we wrap around the families um, in order to empower them to become a thriving part of our community? And just another round of applause. Thank you uh, to uh, all of the agencies, both at the city and, and at the county level, uh, that collectively have come together to support our new residents in the city of Columbus. Thank you, Council President. Um, oh, my apologies. Sorry, just I wanted to add one other thing because I, I know that um, this has been a community-wide effort, but I also wanted to um, ensure that we also shouted out um, Haitian Community Network LLC is the only organized uh, Haitian uh, organization that we have here in the city of Columbus that has been lending support to the effort. They've also been doing drives if folks are watching and they want to offer support. If you follow Haitian Community Network on um, on uh, Facebook or on Instagram, they've also been doing drives. But I think especially at a time like this where a lot of these folks were brought here under, um, uh, they were tricked into coming here. Right, and so that's why we've been in this precarious situation with this particular community. And so, having folks that are proximate to you that understand your culture and your language, and that are quite literally your people, is comforting. And so, I just wanted to ensure also that we um, acknowledge them and acknowledge the work that they're doing because they are a very small grassroots organization. Um, and I know that they're hurting very much for what's happening uh, to folks in their community. And so um, I also wanted to add uh, the thanks that we have given to um, to this community by providing them the resources. And now it's just the long game of ensuring that we get them into more permanent housing so that they are taken care of and that they're um, uh, uh, that we are also taking care of their immigration issues, helping them, providing them with the resources and the platforms to do so. So thank, thank you. Thank you for that, Council Member Rosa de Padilla. And that also just reminded me um, that uh, we should also inform residents that this is still an ongoing uh, legal matter uh, that the Columbus City Attorney's Office uh, is actively pursuing. Uh, so we will continue uh, to, to uh, remain uh, diligent um, and supporting uh, the city attorney as they move forward uh, to ensure that the rights of our new Americans um, are upheld while also holding um, those owners of the property uh, accountable. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Remy. Thank you very much, Council President Harden. I'd like to invite the uh, Northern Vikings football team up to the podium as I introduce Resolution 219X 2023 to recognize the Northern Vikings football team on their historic 2023 season here in Columbus. The City of Columbus recognizes the hard work and dedication of the Northern Vikings 2023 football team coaches, staff, and the 2024 football senior class of Northern High School. The season's accomplishments include back-to-back -back City North champs, the best record in school history, their first-ever home playoff game, and first-ever back-to-back playoff appearances. The team received nu numerous honorable mentions for the All-City Conference as well as first and second team All-Conference and the Northland Vikings football class of 2024 accomplished goals that nobody expected. With their first season beginning through COVID-19, this group has shown strength and courage in the face of adversity. University. Additionally, head coach Ryan Sayers was awarded the Division II Central District Coach of the Year. I would like to hereby recognize and congratulate the Northland High School Vikings on their historic football se season. Uh, coach Sayers, would you like to lead, kick it off this evening? Yes, first I just want to say thank you on behalf of the entire school as well um, and, and all that you guys do for Columbus. Um, it, it's been an honor to represent these guys and lead these guys through this historic year, and they've just done a phenomenal job um, for us for all four years that they've uh, been playing for us. The, uh, this senior class has been through a lot of adversity, especially with COVID, not, mm. not, not playing during COVID and not knowing when the next time you were going to get to play, and then to come this far and, and be able to do all those uh, those historic things like the first ever playoff game uh, or playoff game at Northland High School and be able to have the best school record is just a remarkable thing for them to come through these four years. Um, and it's just been an honor to be with them and, you know, coach alongside of these guys that are also up here. 
Um, and we, thank you guys again, though. Um, and I'll have Brad Neal. We'll go ahead and talk as one of our seniors. Um, hey, my name is Brad Neal Jones. And I would like to say thank you for this opportunity, this opportunity, and uh, for recognizing us this season. And yeah. Congratulations. If, if, if you wouldn't mind, um, could you go ahead and tell your senior uh, what, what, what would, you got recognized? Could you tell what recognition you got this year? Um, just recognizing us for the hard work we put in. No, I meant, are you all, you said you, some of you were all district and. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. I was um, first team all city um, and first team all district. And now we just waiting for the all state honors right now. Awesome. And if the rest of the team and the coaches want to introduce themselves with the same, that'd be great. Uh, my name is Malachi Hammond. Uh, I'm not a senior, but I am a junior. And I made second team all district and first team all city this year. Okay. So that's, that's a good day. I'm, I'm willing to strive to go higher next season. So that's, that's, that's what I'm willing to do. Excellent. Uh, my name is Jared Jackson Rivera. Uh, I made a special mention all district in first team all city. Awesome. <laughs> my name is Mir Brown. I made a uh, first team all city and first team all district. Great. Uh, my name is uh, Calvin Moore. I got an uh, honorable mention senior year. Awesome. My name is Charles Woodford. I made second team all district, and I'm a senior. Awesome. Coaches, you want to say hi real quick? Introduce yourself. My name is Daryl Hill, and I just want to congratulate these guys for a great season. And uh, the hard work that they put in was, uh, uh, it, was it was earned. So thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Perrin Cunningham, uh, offensive line coach. It's been an honor to be on this staff, an honor to coach these guys, growing up with these guys. And, uh, thank you guys for having us here. How you doing? My name is Chris Tugger. I'm the running back coach. And it was a pleasure to coach these young men. They're real good guys. Excellent. Uh, my name is Jalen Wells. I uh, wanted to thank you all for the recognition. And it's been a pleasure coaching these guys. We're going to miss uh, all the seniors. Well, again, thank you so much. We appreciate uh, the commitment you made to excellence and uh, certainly appreciate what you were able to accomplish this year. Looking forward to the next season and what it may, may mean to the Northam Vikings. So, again, congratulations. Um, do any of my colleagues have anything they'd like to say? Councilmember Banks. Well, I'm going to try to talk in my low register because these, these uh, <laughs> high school seniors got a deeper voice than me. Um, <laughs> No, um, I, I, first off, as many know, I'm a proud East High School graduate, but more than that, I'm a proud Columbus City Schools graduate. And so to see you all here standing here is not just a testament, I think, to your program, but it's a testament to show that the City League is strong uh, and we are coming back and that we have the talent like any other of the leagues around this state. So I want to say congratulations to you all, uh, but more importantly, I want to charge you uh, because now that you have gone this far, you have a responsibility. Even though you may be a senior, you may be leaving, you have to pour into your brothers that are out there on the field that are coming behind you. Because now you leave a legacy. That legacy only lasts if you lean into it. And so I, we are expecting great things from you on behalf of the city um, and also expecting great things of this program. Uh, but that is only going to happen if you guys make sure you show for your brothers as well. So you don't get the summer off. You don't get to chill. You don't get to kick it. I need you to be out there uh, encouraging them. And then let me speak more clearly to you all uh, as black men, that you are worthy, uh, that you are more than just this moment, and that this sport and this uh, vehicle is just that. It's a vehicle for you uh, to do better for yourself, to do better for your community, uh, and to make sure that you go to whatever heights you want to go to and understand that you have the ability to do that and that you have a council and a city that believes in you, and you have a coaching staff and a community that believes in you. So regardless of what the statistics say, 
regardless of what adversity may bring you, you have demonstrated and proven that you are able to overcome anything. And that is who you are. And so I charge you with that. I wish you the best, uh, whatever your next may be, and also wish this great organization a great season. Now, next year when y'all go to play the Tigers, I ain't going to be saying that, but I'm just saying what I'm saying. <laughs> but congratulations. Anyone else? Oh, Councilmember Brooks. I just wanted to add, as a proud Eastmore High School graduate, uh, this is our ongoing rival every day, but I um, uh, – I just wanted to say I love when we bring young people down here and we celebrate the accomplishments of young people because you may not always see yourself in these spaces, but um, this is a good part of this work, right, is to see y'all shine and to give you a uh, platform to do that. And so, um, you know, sports are everything. I'm the mom of, a, of two young athletes, and it builds community. It builds character. It helps you strive for your goals. And so congratulations to you. But um, I also want to just talk to this coaching team because this is – uh, this is also long game work, is working with young people. And you, you're planting seeds and you don't always get to see that. And so for um, every time you, you pour into the young people that are part of your program, we all benefit from all of that. So congratulations, because this is so much more than just a game. It's so much more than the accomplishments. It's watching them grow and watching them become the people who are they going to be, who they are going to be, and one day watching you know, maybe someone from Northland sitting on this dais or leading our city in different ways. So congratulations to y'all as well. well. We are we already got them signed up to do Cleaner Columbus cleanup. So we're, you know, which is, we're excited about that. So anyway, anything else? All right. That, with that, I move for, a res, uh, move for adoption. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Adopted. And before we, before we uh, move on, I gotta say thank you and and be and to express my moment of thanks to this city, to my colleagues, to the directors, and all who make this work so important and special to me. I always have my Thanksgiving uh, thanks that I like to give out, but. These people up here on this dais are family. I have never had the pleasure of working with such great, dedicated, committed individuals as you see sitting up here. And uh, don't always agree, but it's like family when we don't. We talk it through, we work it out. And you know, this city should be proud of the pe people that are sitting up here because we are doing great work and we are excited to do that work. And so I want to just take the moment to thank everybody, wish everybody in this city a happy Thanksgiving, a safe Thanksgiving, and uh, certainly look forward to, uh, to uh, more work ahead. But, um, you know, we couldn't do it with all the people sitting out here in the, as directors, people sitting behind us that make the, the wheels turn. And so we appreciate all of you, and uh, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Councilmember. That is Councilmember Ramey's annual emotional Thanksgiving um, <laughs> statement. It makes uh, all of us smile. I'm very grateful for it. Um, and I should have shouted out Northland, because I realized that my two colleagues, as they were like, applauding Northland, they were also shouting out where they went to high school. So Eastmore. Uh, East, and then so I'm just going to say Kaz. Shout out to Kaz. We don't have, we didn't have a sports team at Kaz, but, uh, but congratulations to the Northland uh, for their their uh, efforts. As Councilman Remy said, um, uh, obviously we're celebrating the holidays this season, this week. Next week we will not have council, so uh, council will re, uh, resume on Monday, December 4th. And so we do wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving um, as you um, celebrate. Um, as you know, this is uh, Beat the Team Up North Week also. And as you came into Council Chambers, I'm sure you saw that the, the M's are crossed out. So I want to shout out the interns who um, had to find a ladder in City Hall to uh, put it up. Brad, thank you so much. Um, we are rooting for our Buckeyes uh, this weekend. So um, go Bucks.
Uh, and then I have one resolution. I'd like to invite up Dr. Ray DeBussy and uh, folks who are here to uh, recognize Transgender Day of Remembrance. I have resolution 0221X-2023. Um, the reason why this resolution is so important, so important now more than ever, is that in 2023, in this year, there are over 530 anti-LGBTQIA plus bills circulating through state houses across this country. Five bills are currently pending in our state that would limit the rights of transgender people. These bills ban or limit access to gender affirming care, to public restrooms, to sports, and legal recognition, which continues to fuel anti-transgender violence and hate. Uh, this council is appalled by the legislation and it is an affront to a welcoming inclusive Columbus that we foster. So this Transgender Day of Remembrance serves to recognize our trans community, but to honor and acknowledge the lives of trans transgender individuals that have been lost to violence, discrimination, or prejudice. We celebrate the resilience of the community despite the unrelenting attacks from lawmakers who are supposed to be looking out for folks. Um, instead attacking folks. And we commit ourselves to this fight for a future where transgender individuals in our community not only survive, but they thrive. And our message is clear to this state house that if you want to come after our trans kids, you're going to come through cities first uh, and through this council. Um, because uh, as long as there are people out there bringing folks down, there, we will be here as Columbus community lifting our community up. And so um, I am just um, glad that, again, this. This is important every year, but it seems even more important this year. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over. Do any of my colleagues have any comments before? If not, I will, uh, we'll turn it over to Dr. Debussy. Hi there, my name is Dr. Rhea Debussy, pronouns she, her, and I'm the Director of External Affairs at Equitas Health. I'm thankful for the opportunity to address you all tonight, and I appreciate my fellow community members for asking me to speak this evening. Transgender Day of Remembrance, or TDOR, is a solemn and somber occasion. We appreciate that the City of Columbus and Columbus City Council has taken a moment to issue this resolution, and this resolution commemorates the occasion and recognizes the many lives lost to anti-trans violence, which, dis which disproportionately affects black transgender women. On behalf of the community, we extend this gratitude to the Columbus City Council. We also ask for continued tangible action to curb this epidemic of violence, which is so often marked by trans misogynoir Last year, the city attorney's office recorded a nearly 400% increase in reported instances of violence related to transgender, non-binary, and gender expansive people in Columbus. With such alarming rates of violence skyrocketing, our community also requires our elected officials to identify community-informed solutions and to act. For without action, how can we protect those who are the most vulnerable of our community? Again, thank you to the Columbus City Council for this first step in recognizing and addressing anti-trans violence in the city of Columbus. And thank you to my fellow community members who I appreciate so dearly. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for standing in the gap. Thank you for representing uh, the, the larger community. And like we said, we stand um, here with you and we look forward to doing all that we can to make sure, especially that we push back on this radical state house right now and that folks feel safe and they see our advocacy, hear our advocacy. Um, we are with you. So are there any questions or comments with my colleagues, from my colleagues? Council member. I know that we generally uh, tend to uh, have um, our young folks introduce themselves, but I think it's uh, incredibly important, especially in this moment and the season that we're in, uh, where this community is specifically under attack, yeah. uh, to to put a, a face behind a name. And I wholeheartedly believe that representation matters. And for every young person or any person who is watching tonight, um, they may see themselves in you and find a little bit of courage within themselves uh, mm -hmm. to be outspoken. Uh, and to live out proudly, uh, just as you have all today. So if, Council President, if we could do that, that'd be really great. For sure. If there are no other questions or comments, I move for passage, for adoption. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Thanks, Dan Barroso. I'm, I'm so sorry. Please, please, please. Before we call for adoption. Thank you. You. If, if you'd like oh, to. If you folks would like to introduce themselves. Anybody else want to Come on, baby. I'm Tyson Crenshaw, pronouns he, him. 
transgender man here in the community. And I'd love to see actions follow this. This is amazing. Michaela Denise, I identify as non-binary, very trans adjacent, and thank you for this moment in time. Luster P. Singleton, he, they, I identify masculine of center, non-binary. Hi, my name is Desiree Williams. I'm a transgender woman, and I go by she, her. Good evening, my name is Alex Shanks. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I identify as a transgender man, but also a husband and a father. Um, and a uh, corporate executive. Right. Karen Hewitt, I use she, Z, and they pronouns. Um, I am a community advocate and also a corporate executive. Um, and I'm grateful for this, and I'm really looking forward to the tangible ways that we can support each other and find ways to turn this into something a little different than just remembering people who have gone. Uh -huh. Thank you. Right. With that, is, uh, I move for adoption. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor. Remy, President Harden. Adopted. Questions or uh, announcements from our elected officials? Uh, are there any requests by members of council for the removal of an ordinance or resolution on the consent portion of the agenda? Hearing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading of titles of third aid legislation on tonight's agenda. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor. Remy, President Harden. Thank you. With the clerk now reading to the records, order number, ordinance numbers of 30 day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading. Technology Committee Ordinances 3078 and 3089 2023. Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinances 3085 and 3103 2023. Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 2866, 2934, 2936, 2960, 2961, 2981, 3020, 3039, 3042, 3072, 3077, 3098, 30. 99 3100 3111 2023. Excuse me, I have one more in that committee 3157 2023. Criminal Justice and Judiciary Committee Ordinance 3122 2023. Public Safety Committee Ordinance 3104 2023. Environment Committee Ordinance 3101 2023. Finance Committee Ordinance 3155 2023. Rules and Reference Committee Ordinances 2802 and 2989 2023. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Do we have a speaker on the first reading? No. Uh, the following ordinance appear on our agenda as consent action. Will the clerk now read those into the record? Resolutions of Expression 220X 218X 2023, Economic Development Committee Ordinances 2693, 2979, 3054 2023, Technology Committee Ordinances 3026 and 3107 2023, Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinances 2926, 3003, 3004, 3019, 3062, 3075, 3196, 3197, 3198, and 3199-2023, Neighborhoods and Immigrant, Refugee, and Migrant Affairs Committee, Ordinance 2925-2023, Veterans, Senior, and Disability Affairs Committee, Ordinance 2945 
and 3046-2023, Recreation and Parks Committee Ordinance 3058-2023, Education Committee Ordinance 3102-2023, Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 2759, 2799, 2914, 2935, 2955, 3033, 3051-2023, Housing Committee Ordinances 3001, 3002, 3207, 3208-2023, Health and Human Services Committee, Ordinances 2371, 2973, 3144-2023, Public Safety Committee, Ordinance 3173-2023, Environment Committee, Ordinances 2998, 3139 and 3145-2023, Administration Committee Ordinance 3148-2023, Finance Committee Ordinances 2893, 2938-3114, 3216-2023, Appointments from the Mayor's Office numbered A0176, 178, 183, 184, 185, 186, 187, 188, 189, 190, 191, and 192-2023. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, seeing no uh, speakers uh, on the consent portion agenda, I just heard that uh, normally we would probably hear from Mr. Nate Wilkins. Nate is under the weather today, so if you're watching at home, Nate, we are thinking about you, so get better soon. Um, but may I have a motion for approval of these items designated as consent? Okay. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa, De Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. The uh, consent agenda is passed. We'll now proceed with the second reading of 30-day uh, postponed and emergency legislation. The first committee to come before council is the Economic Development Committee, chaired by Councilmember Bankston. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Council President. Tonight, Economic Development Committee, we, for second reading, we have Ordinance 3083-2023 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into a capital improvement agreement with the Gravity Project 3 Holdings, LLC, in an amount up to $2 million to reimburse for certain eligible project costs associated with inclusive housing units to be provided by the Greenhouse Gravity Project in East Franklinton to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to execute and approve such other agreements and instruments contemplated by the agreement to authorize the expenditure of up to $2 million from the development taxable bond fund and to allow expenditures prior to the purchase order and to declare an emergency. Uh, this ordinance, 1761-2023, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the ordinance 1761-2023, which was approved by this body on June 26, authorized an economic development agreement with the Gravity Project Three Holdings LLC that memorialized a city contribution of $4 million for certain eligible costs associated with the Greenhouse Gravity Project. Per the economic development agreement, the developer has committed to dedicating um, 32 un approximately 32 units of the project to residents at or below 80% of the area median income. And the city committed to making $2 million of the city contribution available for costs associated with the inclusive housing units. This legislation authorizes the expenditure of that amount um, to reimburse the Gravity Project 3 Holdings LLC for eligible costs related to the inclusive housing units previously mentioned. This legislation is requesting emergency action to avoid the further delay of the new affordable housing units being developed and to fulfill post-closing financial requirements for the developers other lenders. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. That's all I have on my committee this evening. Thank you. Next committee to come before council is the Public Service Transportation Committee, chaired by Councilman Barossa de Padilla. Councilman, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. I have uh, three ordinances today in public service and transportation. The first is Ordinance 2978-2023 to authorize the Director of Public Service to modify an existing contract with LAS Parking Midwest LLC doing business as LAS Carp Associates LLC. 
uh, uh, LAS provision of off-street parking management services to authorize the expenditure of up to $1 million from the Mobility Enterprise Operating Fund and to declare an emergency. The Department of Public Services manages our, or Public Service manages our off-street parking garages. This ordinance allows the city to modify an existing contract with LAS parking to account for the increase in the patronage of city-owned off-street parking facilities in recent months, as well as the addition of management of the new Astor Park garage resulting in additional uh, operational costs. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bangston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Great. And on my next ordinance, I do have a speaker, so if they want to start making their way down, and I'm really excited about this ordinance. This is 3171-2023 to authorize the Director of the Department of Public Service to enter into a grant agreement with the Short North Alliance to support the Short North Alliance Open Streets Holiday Hop to authorize an appropriation and expenditure within the Neighborhoods Initiative Subfund and to declare an emergency. So I want to talk about why I'm excited about this. So Open Streets is a concept that allows people and communities to replace traffic and cars and transform streets into public spaces open to all. And I'm excited because this is going to be the first of a couple de different demonstrations that we will do next year when the weather's uh, a little more working in our favor. Um, but we're excited about our uh, this partnership with the Short North Alliance. Um, these transformations will allow for a range of activities that promote economic development, support small businesses, and provide new ways for residents to enjoy cultural programming and build community. The Short North Alliance will be hosting the very first open streets location in the city by transforming its legacy event, the Holiday Hop, into an amazing holiday experience for pedestrians to enjoy the Short North on December 2nd and occurring all on one of the city's main corridors along High Street. So I'd like to uh, turn the podium over to Betsy Pandora to talk to us a little bit more about what Holiday Hop will look like this year. Well, thank you so very much, um, Council President Hardin and Council Member uh, Barossa Di Badia for um, inviting me here tonight and for your support um, and all members of Council for the incredible work you're doing. I have to break from my remarks for a second to just acknowledge the power of tonight's agenda thus far and how incredible it is to, um, to join in after so many amazing acknowledgements from affordable housing to the incredible community members that are here. It's really an inspiration and I'm deeply grateful. Uh, my name is Betsy Pandora, and I'm the Executive Director of the Short North Alliance, and I truly could not be more gracious and excited to be before you um, to help make history uh, on High Street on December 2nd. For the first time, the Short North Arts District will be transformed into a pedestrian-only winter wonderland for Holiday Hop. Holiday Hop is a legendary Columbus tradition where we welcome all to our community to experience art and culture. Historically, Holiday Hop is the largest gallery hop of the year and is one of the busiest days and nights in our business district. But this year, on December 2nd, we will do what we have never done before, <laughs> which is truly prioritize the pedestrian experience on High Street, our city's most significant street, through open streets. The greatest cities across America and across the world have reimagined how streets are used and who streets are for. And for the first time, we will be taking that concept to High Street in the short north. I know you all might be looking at me like I'm a little bit crazy right now. Isn't she usually the person who's asking for more parking <laughs> and more notice of street closures and more congestion management strategies? Well, we have more parking than ever before, and we have more passion than ever before to remake the ways in which people are included and how we celebrate traditions old and new. And we also have incredible city leaders like you who share in that passion and who are champions of open streets and of pushing our way of engaging as a community forward. It is our pleasure to make the Short North Arts District one of the first places in Columbus and to transform this way and everything that we do in the Short North uh, to be exciting and to be meaningful. All of you are invited to experience over 300 businesses, the majority of whom are locally owned and headquartered, along with the first ever High Street Holiday Market, adding dozens of creative, diverse, and unique artisans and festive purveyors to our community on December 2nd. We have amazing partnerships with social service nonprofits where your holiday spending and cheer can benefit those most in need in our community. From tree sales benefiting New Life Community Outreach, gift 
wrapping benefiting Dress for Success Columbus and a toy for Tots Drive. And there will also be holiday fashions from the Columbus Fashion Alliance, amazing art exhibitions from all of our art galleries, and yummy eats from our restaurants, and dozens of holiday performers, including the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus, who will lead us all in a special sing-along right at 7 p.m. directly under the arches. We can't thank you enough for helping us to make this vision come to a reality and to support the livelihoods and enjoyment of all in the art and soul of Columbus. Let's make this a new tradition. So Betsy, I wanna thank you and I wanna thread the needle for folks so that they really understand when we first started talking about the concepts of open streets and again, prioritizing people um, and their safety and what it looks like, especially as we talk about Link Us, especially as we talk about density, what it really looks like when we put people who are on foot or on um, cycles first and what that looks like when people really own the streets and we're putting them forward. That's what the open streets concept is. And so as we talk to uh, Betsy about the idea of open streets next year and we thought about holiday hop this year and really the shot on the arm that our local businesses would need, especially around the holidays, coming still overcoming COVID and still overcoming some of the challenges, we thought that this was the first spot for us to demonstrate um, open streets, what it looks like on um, this scale, and then how do we build upon that and actually do that in other places around the city next year. So I'm really excited about this partnership. Again, this is a way that we're not just, pri we're, we're truly prioritizing people, not just from a transportation aspect, but again, from a, uh, from an economic development aspect as well. And so I just, uh, again, want to thank uh, Betsy's openness for the partnership of all the businesses in the Short North Alliance, um, all the businesses along the Short North and along the corridor, our friends in um, public service who have also, uh, obviously, without without that partnership, this could not happen. Um, and Assistant Director, do you, is there anything that you want to add to this before we? Good evening, uh, President Harden, Pro Tem Dorans, Chair Barosa de Padilla, and other members of council. We are very excited to help support and um, partner with the Short North and Council on this endeavor. Awesome. And I think this is just another innovative way for us to start to help people to imagine what our city is going to look like, what our city looks like, and what it looks like when we prioritize safety. So um, again, thank you. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Yes. I, think, one, I just want to thank you, Madam Chair, um, but also I just want to underscore the economic impact, um, particularly on our small businesses. So. Again, want to encourage everyone, but also think of Holiday Hop as the kickoff to the holidays and your holiday shopping. Think local when you're going out to go shopping. I know it's very easy for us now to go on Amazon. I got a cart full of stuff right here. Uh, but that one gift that you can pull out for the holiday party or for whatever, uh, just that one gift will make a tremendous impact in our local small business. So um, please go out. Uh, looking forward to this event. I'm going to bundle up, make sure I'm there. Uh, but also make sure that we support our small businesses. So thank Others you. Others looking good. Yes. Knock on wood. <laughs> We're excited about it. Uh, any other questions or comments? Great. Okay, so seeing then, I move for passage. Second. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and lastly, today in public service, uh, we have Ordinance 3172-2023 to authorize the Director of the Department of Public Service to enter into a service contract with Citywide Facility Solutions for the provision of snow removal and de-icing services with this winter to waive the competitive bidding requirements of the Columbus City Codes to authorize the expenditure of $100,000 from the Street Construction Maintenance Repair Fund for that purpose and to declare an emergency. So uh, we talked about this at our last council meeting. The Department of Public Service is vital during our winter's months in providing snow removal and de-icing during inclement weather. Last week, we heard from our snow warriors who clear more than 90,000 lanes uh, or miles of roadway each winter and to supply city crews on local roadways um, citywide facility solutions will be providing up to three trucks and staff capable of plowing or de-icing during heavy snowfall. Um, do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Great. Seeing none, um, I move to amend as submitted to the clerk. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, President Hart. Amend it. 
Right, and next I move for a passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. And then I have one ordinance in Veterans, Senior, and Disability Affairs. May I move to that committee? Please. Thank you. Uh, ordinance 24, or 2944-2023 to authorize and direct uh, the Director of the Department of Recreation and Parks to enter into 21 not-for-profit service contracts with local senior service providers to provide social and nutrition services to older adults in Central Ohio for the period of January 1, 2024 to December 31st, 2024, and to authorize the expenditure of $6,670,000 from the Recreation Parks Grant Fund. The Central Ohio Area uh, Age, Area Agency on Aging, or COAAA, takes a comprehensive approach to support older adults and individuals with disabilities by planning, funding, and delivering services such as homemaking, transportation, home-delivered meals, personal care, and more, ensuring that they can maintain safety and independence in the comfort of their homes. These 21 contracts will provide for the provision of congregate and home-delivered meals, adult daycare, medical assessment, supportive services, homemaker, personal care, transportation, home repair, legal services for the next calendar year. Approximately 40,000 individuals are expected to be served. And Councilmember Brown, my partner in all good, is there anything that you would like to add? Thank you, Councilmember. I think it's just important to acknowledge that the senior citizen community is being addressed. I mean, you said it with uh, the appropriate emphasis. Over 40,000 senior citizens are going to be taken care of uh, during the year of 23-24. That's really special. And from home repairs, which I know all the council members are concerned about, let alone medical care for the senior citizens, it's a special deal, and I appreciate you uh, bringing forth the legislation. Thank you. Absolutely. Do any of my other colleagues have questions or comments? I just want to also put in a plug that as we come into the winter months and as we're coming into inclement weather, and I think that we've probably said this before, but this is the time, especially around the holidays, to check in on um, our older residents. So that neighbor, uh, the friend that you have down the street, just ensuring that they're okay, that they're taken care of, um, and um, that they have the things that they need to get through the holidays or to get through the winter. Um, we'll continue to remind folks of that, but um, that's why this legislation is so important. So um, without further questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Torrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you, Council President. That's all for me this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next committee to come before Council is the Public Utilities Committee, chaired by President Pro Tim. Floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Council President. First, we have uh, <clears throat> Ordinance 2942-2023 to authorize the Director of the Department of Public Utilities to enter a contract modification with DLZ Ohio for the lateral lining blueprint North Linden 1 Hudson McGuffey project to authorize an amendment to the 2023 capital improvement budget to authorize a transfer of cash and appropriation within the sanitary bond fund and to expend up to $1,822,179.64 from the sanitary bond fund for the contract modification. <clears throat> This plan contract modification is for construction administration and inspection services for the North Linden Blueprint Hudson McGuffey project. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing on a move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Torrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 3015-2023 to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to associate all general budget reservations resulting from this ordinance with the appropriate universal term contract with Jack uh, Donny Companies Incorporated and Southeast Equipment uh, Co. Inc. for the purchase of a com uh, combination vacuum truck articulating loader for the Department of Public Utilities and amend the 2023 capital improvement budget to authorize the transfer of cash and appropriation within the sanitary bond fund uh, to authorize expenditure of up to $1 million $42,866.32 in the sanitary bond fund to pay for the equipment and declare an emergency. Um, the combination truck will be used by operators of the sewer maintenance operations center to clear clogged sewer lines, vacuum debris from drains, and perform general preventative maintenance in sewer lines. The articulating wheel loader uh, will be used by operators of the compost facility for processing raw materials and biosolids into reusable Comtil compost product. Emergency action is requested to finalize the contract for these vehicles as soon as possible because of the current volatile pricing and long lead times for vehicle purchases uh, as, a, as a will result in expired quotes and increase potentially the price of vehicles. Do we have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. 
Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. Uh, Council President, your permission, I'd like to move back uh, on our agenda to rules and reference on page 20 of our agenda. Please. Thank you. Uh, the next two ordinances are the proposed utility uh, rate adjustments for the year 2024. Uh, all three were on first read at our last council meeting on November 13th, and the Public Utilities, Utilities Committee held a public hearing last Thursday, November 16th, here in council chambers to pre present the proposed rates. Um, members of the Sewer Water Advisory Board with representatives of the Department of Utilities met four times in 2023 to review and discuss operations and planning, project planning activities of the water, sewer, and stormwater enterprises. At their October 18th meeting, they reviews, reviewed uh, proposed water, sanitary sewer, and stormwater rates. The board approved the following recommendation effective January 1st, 2024. For the fiscal year 2024, the board recommends utility or an increase in the sanitary sewer rates of 5% water rates of 5% and stormwater rates of 1%. Uh, when considered together, together, the bill impact on an average residential customer within the city of Columbus is 4.72%. Overall, this adds approximately $10.16 in charges to a residential customer each bill quarter or $40.65 a year. For larger households, charges increase to $15.91 per quarter or $63.62 uh, per year. The rate adjustments are in line with past increases and allow the department to continue to provide excellent customer service in an environmentally friendly manner to more than 1.2 million people in Central Ohio. We recognize that the water <coughs> and sewer charges disproportionately affect lower income groups. Uh, customers who participate in assistance programs such as HEAP, Medicaid, TANF, or live in public housing may be eligible for a discount on their water slash sewer bill. Seniors age 60 and older with limited income may also qualify for a discount on their bill. The Department of Public Utilities will continue uh, the low income and senior discount program that discounts participants sewer commodity portions of their quarterly bill by 20%. I'd also like to commend the department and our community partners for increasing participation in this program by 32% in the last nine months, while also providing more than $381,000 in assistance to low income and senior customers through a $60 credit program. I know the department is going to continue to offer another uh, credit of $65 in 2024 to all low income and senior discounts customers to offset these rate adjustments. You can learn more by visiting Department of Public Utilities website at columns.gov utilities. As always, the Sewer Water Advisory Board will work with the public utility staff to ensure that future rate increases are minimized to the extent possible. Do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I will now read the titles of legislation and move for passage individually. First, we have Ordinance 3131-2023 to amend various sections of Chapter 1105 of Columbus City Codes to enact new water rates for the year beginning January 1, 2024, and re repeal the existing sections being amended. Do my colleagues have a question or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 3041-2023 to amend Section 1149.08 of the Columbus City Codes to enact new storm water fees for the year beginning January 1, 2024, and repeal the existing sections being amended. Uh, do my colleagues have a question for comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Wait, sorry. Clerk, please call the roll on Ordinance 3141. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we have ordinance number 3142 um, to amend sections 1147.11 the Columbus City Goes to enact new sanitary sewer service rates for the year beginning January 1, 2024, and to repeal the existing sections being amended. Do I have my colleagues some questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Right. Thank, you. Thank you, Council Presidents. I'll have my committees at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next committee coming for Council is the Health and Human Services Committee, chaired by Council Member Favor. Council Member, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President Harden. Tonight in Health and Human Services, we have Ordinance 2943-2023 to authorize the transfer of appropriations from the Health Department Grant Fund to reflect the originating funding sources from the Ohio Department of Health for the Reproductive Health and Wellness Grant Program to authorize additional transfers of appropriations based on the Ohio Department of Health funding sources and to authorize the acceptance of a Additional grant funds. 
This ordinance authorizes the city to transfer appropriations from grant money received from the Ohio Department of Health grants to support the Reproductive Health and Wellness Grant Program. This ordinance also allows Columbus Public Health Department to receive additional funds from the Ohio Department of Health in support of the Reproductive Health and Wellness Grant Program for the period of April 1st, 2023 to March 31st, 2024, totaling to a fiscal impact of $1.7 million. Are there any questions or comments by my colleagues? Seeing none, I'd move for passage. Second. Is there a second? second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 2999-2023 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into a contract with Environmental Remediation Contractor, LLC, in an amount up to $100,000 to waive the competitive bidding requirements of Columbus City Code to authorize the payment of expenses beginning November 1st, 2023 to address citizen complaints of solid waste, hazardous materials, trash, litter, and debris on city-owned and or maintained parcels and right-of-ways by facilitating the the identification, cleanup, and disposal of said items to authorize the expenditure of $100,000 from the Neighborhood Economic Development Fund and to declare an emergency. Under this contract, when the City of Columbus receives complaints of solid waste, trash, hazardous materials, litter, or debris on city-owned or maintained parcels, the Development Program Manager will inspect and coordinate with the contractor to conduct the remediation and disposal of the locations. This contract is in an amount up to $100,000 and authorizes the payment of expenses beginning November 1st, 2023. The coming winter months will create conditions that increase the amount of complaints the city receives, resulting in an increased need for timely, cost-effective waste removal services. Thus, a waiver of the competitive procurement requirements is requested. Further, emergency action is requested to quickly address citizen complaints of solid waste, hazardous materials, trash, litter, and debris on city-owned and maintained parcels. Are there any questions or comments by my colleagues? Seeing none, I'd move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 3047-2023 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into a service contract with R.H. Brown & Company, LLC, in an amount up to $300,000 to provide support for those in need of emergency rehousing services to waive the competitive bidding provisions of Columbus City Code Chapter 329 to authorize the term of the contract from November 1st, 2023 to September 30th, 2025 to authorize the expenditure of $300,000 from the ERA2 fund and to declare an emergency. The city's emergency rehousing initiative assists tenants who have been involuntarily displaced and are struggling to find available rental housing and rehousing assistance. This initiative includes helping tenants identify rental housing that meets their needs based on the affordability of rent, family size, and location. R.H. Brown Company LLC will work with and support those in need of emergency rehousing in evaluating choices and making informed decisions for their housing needs. This contract will further the city's emergency rehousing initiative in helping to achieve housing stability for those that are involuntarily displaced. The Department of Development is requesting a competitive bid waiver so as to ensure the timely execution of rapid rehousing services for those in immediate need. Further, emergency action is requested to help achieve housing stability for those that are facing or have already been un involuntarily displaced and are in need of emergency rehousing services. Are there any questions or comments by my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Let's just call Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Thank you. And at last, we have Ordinance 3292-2023 to authorize the city auditor to appropriate and transfer funds from the Special Income Tax Fund to the Northland and Other Acquisitions Bond Fund to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into a grant agreement with the Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County in an amount up to not to exceed $4,500,000 in support of the Mental Health and Addiction Crisis Care Center Project and to authorize the expenditure of $4,500,000 from the Northland and Other Acquisitions Bond Fund. Ranked 38th in the nation, excuse me, Ohio is among the states where adults have a higher prevalence of mental illness and lower rates of access to care. 
At this time, while I finish uh, my um, introductory remarks, I'd like to invite uh, Erica Clark Jones and Juliet Doris, who are representatives of Adam H., uh, who are going to provide some additional remarks. Um, as I was stating, uh, ranked 38th in the nation, Ohio is among the states where adults have a higher prevalence of mental illness and lower rates of access to care, according to Mental Health America, a nonprofit that focuses on mental illness and mental health. Officials estimate that 21% of Franklin County's 1.3 million residents have a mental health emergency annually. About 10% abuse or are dependent on drugs or alcohol. On average in Franklin County, there are 30,000 mental health episodes each year requiring treatment of 21,800 uh, folks, of which include a visit to a hospital emergency room. There is a demonstrable need for a new center dedicated to mental health crisis and addiction treatment. The Crisis Care Center is a $60 million project that will include an observation unit, short-term inpatient unit, and a walk-in clinic. Upon completion, it will serve as the primary location for first responders to take patients in need of addiction or psychiatric care. The facility will help destigmatize mental illness, lessen the load on emergency rooms, and fill a hole in the community's crisis care continuum. Emergency action is requested in order to provide Adam H. with the resources necessary to continue and complete construction on the crisis care center. It's now my honor to turn the podium over. Thank you. Council President Hardin, President Pro Tem Dorans, Chair Favor, members of Columbus City Council. My name is Julia Doris Williams. I am honored to be here today as the Executive Director of the Peer Center, which is a drop-in wellness recovery and support center for persons living with mental health, addiction, and trauma challenges. I am also a member of the Adam H. Crisis Care Community Advisory Council. Most importantly, I stand before you as a person with lived experience, representing the voice of so many individuals and families across our community who will benefit <clears throat> immensely from the new Franklin County Crisis Care Center. This, <clears throat> excuse me, this crisis care center represents a new approach to care for adults experiencing mental health and or related crises one that sees the whole person and provides care specific to their needs. When the Crisis Care Center opens its doors, it will be a totally different experience than the journey many of us have had to take in the past. And I've heard the traumatic stories from my teammates and from the people we serve. My own journey, though I was lucky enough to find skilled and caring clinicians, my recovery was greatly impacted by the power of my peers, people with my same lived experience, who really did know what I was going through, who could give me a vision for what was possible, who really could model for me the hope of wellness and recovery. Had it not been for these people, my peers, I may not have developed the strength and the courage that would ultimately lead me to my current role, and frankly, to this very specific moment in time. This facility is uniquely designed by our community, for our community, in large part because individuals with lived experience have been part of the planning at all levels. On behalf of my peers who live with mental health and addiction challenges, thank you for your commitment and partnership in helping make the Franklin County Crisis Center, Crisis Care Center, a reality. Thank you. Chair Favor, Council President Hardin, President Pro Tem Dorrance, and every member of council, thank you. Thank you for even considering this action tonight. And of course, thank you to my colleague, Juliet. Uh, who has stood shoulder to shoulder with us as we've been planning for the design of this center. And she serves so many every day. My name is Erica Clark Jones, and I'm honored to serve as the CEO of the Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County, which is leading the development of the Franklin County Crisis Care Center. The Crisis Care Center represents a multi-sector, community-wide commitment to ensure better care 
and outcomes for individuals and families experiencing a mental health or addiction-related crisis. On behalf of the board at Adam H. and our many partners, thank you. Thank you, Columbus City Council, for considering the additional capital investment in this facility, which will bring hope and help and healing for so many, not just now, but for generations to come. We're grateful for this consideration. Speaking of gratitude, as others have come up tonight talking about their gratitude, Councilmember Remy, I really like that remark. I'm with you on the emotional front. We are also very emotional about this project. With these additional dollars, we mark an important milestone tonight in our journey together, meeting the fundraising goal for the construction of the nearly $60 million facility. The, this includes investments from the Franklin County Board of Commissioners, the state of Ohio, and Governor DeWine, our every adult serving hospital, including Mount Carmel, Ohio Health, and OSU Wexner Medical Center, as well as our private philanthropic partners, led by the Osteopathic Heritage Foundation and the Tad and Nancy Jeffrey Fund. When it opens in the spring of 2025, the services provided at the Crisis Care Center will be life-saving to many. Within its walls will be a safe, welcoming, supportive environment where crisis services are delivered in a way that meets people where they are, treats them with dignity and respect, and ensures that any adult will receive services regardless of insurance status or their ability to pay. It will serve up to 80 individuals at any point in time and offer critical crisis intervention services including walk-in and inpatient units. With the opening of this center, and to me, I, I think this is a really important fact to underscore, we will increase the number of people served in a community-based setting by up to 25,000 persons annually. That increases our current community-based capacity over 300%. The Crisis Care Center will meet a range of needs through an innovative model that integrates recovery, clinical and medical services together to provide comprehensive person-centered care. Our collective investments also establish a benchmark for prioritizing behavioral health as well as physical health and meeting those needs of our residents. This support makes our community vision a reality. So many people have been talking about this for now almost 10 years. Together, we're improving access to life-saving care, reducing stigma for mental health and addiction support, and helping more in our community live healthy, more productive lives. Thank you. Thank you uh, to you both uh, in, in the spirit of, of Thanksgiving uh, for the work that you do uh, to support our residents in Columbus and around Franklin County, um, serving uh, folks at their most greatest need. Um, we are, I don't know if we should say we're excited, but I am excited uh, that we have prioritized this facility in our community, um, especially as we continue to unpack uh, the true impact of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, that is not to be discounted, uh, the impact that it has had on our mental um, health and our community. And so we are incredibly excited um, and look forward to continuing to support you all um, as uh, was spring 25, 2025, which blows my mind. Uh, are there any additional uh, questions or comments at this time? Madam yes, Chair. Council President. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, for bringing this forward. Um, thank you to uh, my good friend, Ms. Erica Clark Jones, to Ms. Juliet. Uh, just thank you for the work and service that you do already. Um, and I do get excited about um, the way that we will be able to serve uh, more um, of our residents with this competent care. Uh, I was able to go out and visit the site today. It's amazing to think that how far we are along. Uh, when I was, went out there, I really was expecting just to be walking around mud again, and it's a whole building that's there. Um, and so just shout out to all those who are working on this project. But uh, I wanted just to remind folks that as council talks about reimagining public safety, and we talk about um, uh, alternative crisis response, 
it's one thing to be able to send out a clinician to meet a person who is going through uh, having an episode or going through trauma. It's a whole other thing to have a place to take them to serve them competently with, with good care. That's what this facility will provide to more and more of our residents. And as we continue to grow, it just it is so necessary for us to have this. So we're really excited to be able to be a partner, because I think what this facility is, is a physical representation of partnership in Central Ohio. Um, first with our commitment to of $10 million, but when we saw, like everywhere else, um, inflation and everything has an impact on building writ large. Uh, and so when you came back and said, we have this little gap, it was, we were grateful that you would come back to us as a, as a trusted partner um, and that we were able to, to help with that. So uh, we do look forward to being out there uh, uh, spring of next year uh, of 25. It looks like it could almost be done. I'm just saying <laughs> your people would kill me, but um, no, we're really excited uh, to partner with you. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Council President. With that, I'd move for passage. Oh. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council President. That's all I have in my committees. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next committee is Public Safety, uh, chaired by Councilman Remy. Councilman Floor is yours. Thank you very much, Council President. I have one ordinance this evening um, in Public Safety. It's Ordinance 3059-2023 to repeal Ordinance 2533-2023 to authorize the Director of Public Safety to enter into a contract with Soft. Technology Corporation to renew Celebrate software licenses to extract evidence from cellular devices to waive competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code to authorize the expenditure of $193,586.64 from the Law Enforcement Seizure Fund and to declare an emergency. The Division of Police requests a contract with a third-party vendor, Karashoft um, Technology Corp, to renew the Celebrate software licenses to extract di digital evidence used but to help solve crimes. Many crimes have some link to digital evidence. Due to this fact, most divisional units are using the services of the police digital forensics unit to obtain evidence from the cellular and other electronic devices. The vendor, Kerasoft Technology Corp., is a third party provider of the Celebrite license um, software sold exclusively to law enforcement. Um, with this software, the digital forensics unit obtains the ability to unlock and decrypt more phones and extract more evidence to solve crimes. Deputy D Director Dan G, could you um, speak to the waiver um, competitive vetting, please? Yes, uh, President Harden, Chair Remy, members of council, uh, as you correctly said, we are asking for a repeal of the original ordinance. Uh, there were some contract terms with Celebrite that uh, the city attorney recommended we could not agree with, so we're buying us through a third party vendor. Uh, therefore, repealing the original ordinance, authorizing, asking for authorization to contract because the original ordinance was a bid waiver. This is our standard software we use. We're requesting the bid waiver once again in order to award and, uh, and get the software from the third party vendor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hurton. Passed. And that is all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The final committee to come before council is the Finance Committee, which I serve. Uh, tonight in Finance Committee, we have six ordinance uh, to come before council. The first is Ordinance 20. 2993-2023 is to adopt the draft of fiscal year 2024 annual action plan which implements the fifth year of the five-year consolidated plan for CDBG, home ESG, and HOPWA programs to authorize the acceptance of 2024 HUD community plan and development grant awards to authorize the filing of the final fiscal year 2024 annual action plan with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and to declare an emergency. Each year, the grants management section of the Department of Finance and Management is responsible for completing and submitting an annual action plan to the U.S. Department of uh, Housing and Urban Development. This plan identifies projects and establishes budgets for the city's HUDS grants program. We had a lot of, uh, we had a hearing uh, in October about this plan. Uh, Columbus is expecting to receive approximately $15 million in grant awards from four programs, and this legislation authorizes the mayor to accept these grant awards. Do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments uh, on this ordinance? Hearing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Horton. Passed. Next is Ordinance 2995-2023 
to authorize and direct the Director of Finance and Management to appropriate and authorize the expenditure of $2,348,750 in CDBG grant funds from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to enter into a sub-recipient agreement with community-based partners to undertake eligible activities and to declare an emergency. This ordinance is subsequent to the annual action plan legislation. Is It is specifically about the CDBG program, which offers yearly grants to municipalities and counties aiming to foster the creation of sustainable urban communities, primarily targeting individuals with low to moderate income levels. Do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments on this ordinance? Hearing none, I move for passage. Second. Uh, Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Next, I have Ordinance 3084, that's 2023. And as I read this title, I would invite up my friend, uh, Dr. Bertley from COSI uh, to the podium. Uh, Ordinance 3084, that's 2023, is to authorize the city auditor to transfer appropriations appropriations within the Recreation and Parks Taxable Bond Fund to authorize the Director of the Department of Finance and Management to enter into a grant agreement with Franklin County Historical Society doing business as COSI to authorize expenditure of $1 million from Recreation and Parks Taxable Bond Fund and to allow an expenditure of prior to the purchase order. COSI is a critical community partner that provides key educational programming to Columbus residents of all ages and backgrounds. To ensure COSI is accessible to learners of all backgrounds, the city will be helping to fund upgrades and improvements to COSI's elevator systems. I'd like to turn the podium over to my good friend, CEO of COSI, Dr. Frederick Bertley. Thank you, President Harden. Ooh, sorry. Thank you, President Harden. <laughs> I'm City Council, myself and my colleagues here. Just want to share a few remarks. Um, COSI's mission is to engage, inspire, and transform lives and communities by being the best partner in science, technology, and industry learning. And that partnership weaves in the marrow of our bones is in our DNA. And one of our fundamental partners is, of course, the great city of Columbus and all of you. And this year, we had the privilege of celebrating four years in a row being voted the number one science museum in these United States of America by USA Today. And a few months ago, we won the highest award given by the nation at the White House called the National Medal for COSI. The White House brief read, for outstanding community engagement and impact. And while it's fun to win the USA Today ranking, and it's fun, myself and some colleagues got to go to the White House, the award is presented by the First Lady every time, and it was First Lady Dr. Joe Biden who gave us the award. It is really about what happens in this great city back home. Our building sees over 725,000 Columbus and beyond citizens. We're talking about almost 40,000 Columbus City School students. And so while it's nice to do local, regional, national, and now even international um, science delivery, impacting right here in this community is our number one priority. And so our crown jewel is the building just over yonder. Mm. And that building, while part of an ecosystem and we call the People's Peninsula and all this incredible development right here, that building is 22 years old and starting to age. And so this support from you all as city council will allow us to provide a best in class, safe and support the capital asset to make sure everybody has access through elevators, through lifts, through important things to make sure everybody who comes through the doors to engage and inspire and be transformed through science. So with that, I thank you dearly for your support, for the city's unbending support to make your city's COSI the number one science museum in the nation for generations to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Burley. We are extremely proud of our COSI and grateful for the educational opportunities that it provides to uh, all of our residents. So uh, thank you so much for allowing us to be in partnership with you. Thank Do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments on this piece of legislation? Hearing none, uh, there, I move to pass for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Happy holidays. Next on the agenda is Ordinance 3011-2023 to make appropriations for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2024 for each of several object classes for which the City of Columbus has to provide from the monies known to be in the treasury of said City of Columbus 
in the fund known as the general fund during the said 12 months from the collection of all taxes and from other sources of revenue in the amount of one million one billion one hundred and ninety four million seven hundred thousand dollars and to declare an emergency this legislation is a standard year in accounting ordinance that uh, makes uh, appropriations for the various city departments commissions and offices of the city of Columbus Do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments on this ordinance Hearing none, I move for passage. Ooh, that would have been bad. Uh, I, re I move to refer to committee. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Thanks, Dan Barosa de Padilla, Brown Dorrance, Faber Remy, President Harden. Refer to committee. Thank you. Next is Ordinance 3012 uh, 2023 to make appropriations and transfers for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2024, for other funds for various divisions to authorize the city auditor to make transfers as may be necessary and to declare an emergency. Again, this is a standard ordinance that enables the conventional financing for the city of Columbus 2024. Do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? Uh, I, uh, I move for uh, to refer to committee. Clerk, call them, uh, please call the roll. Bingston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Refer to committee. Uh, the last ordinance to come before council was ordinance 3013 that's 2023 to make appropriations for the 12 months ending December 31st 2024 for selected other funds for various divisions to authorize the city of Aud the city auditor to make transfers as may be necessary and to declare an emergency again this is a regular end of year accounting uh, for the city of Columbus that will make appropriations for 2024 for selected funds in various city divisions uh, do any of my colleagues have any questions if none, I move for a refer referral to committee. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Refer to committee. I have one more piece of legislation in rules in reference. Uh, tonight I have one, um, I have ordinance 3105 2023 to amend existing sections 36.2 062, uh, sections 36. 362-067, section 362.091, section 362.094, section 362.10, and to enact new section 362.068 of chapter 362 of the city of Columbus, of the Columbus City Codes to include amendments and enactments required by amended substitute House Bill 33 of the 135th General Assembly concerning, concerning municipal income tax and declared emergency. There have been some new state laws about municipal income tax codes, and this ordinance simply brings our city code into alignment. Um, Alder, do you have anything to add on this? That's, that's fine. Did I read all those numbers right? Uh, do any of my colleagues have any questions? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Passed. See no further business coming for council. Uh, move to adjourn. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Meeting is adjourned. We have one non agenda speaker. Um, I'm going to take it now. Kyle Campbell. Is Kyle here? Kyle, welcome to council.
Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Can I get a motion to dismiss with the reading of the journal? Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bingston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Are there any additions or corrections to the journal? Hearing none, the journal is approved. We'll now go to the Zoning Committee, Councilmember Dorrance, Chairs that Committee, all uh, members serve on it. Councilmember, floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. Before we begin tonight's zoning agenda, allow me to briefly explain our current rules pertaining to speaking for Council on rezonings and variances. We'll hear a staff presentation of ordinance to have a disapproval from a recommending body or if we have a public speaker signed to speak against an ordinance. Uh, this evening we have uh, several uh, public speaker slips filled out, um, some in favor, some against. Uh, if we have someone who's signed up to speak who is not present, the next person on the list will be filling that spot. Uh, all speakers on council variances, including city staff, uh, area commission applicants, and members of the public will be sworn in before we give testimony. Representatives of an area commission and applicants are always able to speak on an ordinance and do not need to fill out a speaker slip. Uh, on the advice of the city attorney's office, I will, will now swear in city staff. Please stand and raise your right hand. Um, be sworn in. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give? Shall be the truth. Nothing but the truth has usually answered a pains or penalty of perjury. If so, please say I do. Thank you. Please let the record reflect that Tim Dietrich from the Department of Building and Zoning Services and Dan Bleschman from the Department of Public Service have been sworn in. Uh, first, we have Ordinance 3006-2023 to rezone um, 919 Old Henderson Road, being 2.07 plus acres located in the southeast corner of Old Henderson Road and Midwest Drive from CPD Commercial Plan Development District to AR1 Apartment Residential District. The requested rezoning will allow a multi-unit residential use. The city staff recognizes that the request does not add an incompatible use to the area in alliance with the city's objective, including more housing. Uh, a concurrent council variance has been requested and includes variance to uh, building and parking setback, perimeter yard, and parking spaces for a 69-unit apartment complex. The proposal has approval from city staff, development commission, Far Northwest Civic Association. Uh, we do have a representative, the zoning chair of the Far Northwest Civic Association here with us this evening, uh, Ms. Monica Dorman-Tuttle to discuss the Civic Association's vote. Ms. Tuttle. Welcome back to council. Thank you, good evening. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak on this. I just wanted to share a couple of brief thoughts. Um, I'm here with Northwest Civic Association. I am the, the zoning chair for that area. Um, we are in support of this rezoning. We do think that it brings needed housing to this area. We continue to look for affordable housing. Again, I understand this is something that all of Columbus is struggling with, but many of the development proposals that are being brought to our area are still not affordable to those residents. We are in support of this application. We have worked tremendously with the um, developer to come to a workable, um, appropriate, um, not only site plan, but also rezoning for this. We do want to reiterate to council that we are continuing to be concerned about the stormwater and sanitary systems that this will flow into. I understand that the lower Olentangy tunnel should alleviate those concerns. We just want to continue to remind you that if they don't, <laughs> we're gonna need to do something. Um, and then finally, just an ongoing effort to make this a walkable neighborhood. We will need increased sidewalks. Unfortunately, there isn't that infrastructure in place right now. There's nothing that's up for rezoning in this area that would allow us to incorporate those sidewalks into it, but that is a big concern from the, the neighborhood. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair Tell Do a council member have questions? Nope. Just, yeah. I, I just a sense. comment, and I just want to commend you because it's just so timely because uh, we just had a uh, public hearing on our housing policies. And when you think about things like a citywide CRA and some of the other policies, it addresses and gets at a neighborhood like yours that wants to make sure that the housing stock is diverse. So thank you for just uplifting that and showcasing why we're moving some of these policies forward. So I just wanted to make sure that wasn't lost. Thank you. Uh, and I just want to, again, say thank you for working through the process. I think this is a good demonstration um, to be able to identify a lot of the issues on the front end and, and certainly work with an applicant to, to get to where we are today. So appreciate you being here and putting those things on the table. Thank you. Um, do want to offer the opportunity for the applicants to make a presentation if they would like. Thank you, Chair Jorns. President Harden, members of the council. My name is Eric Zartman. I'm an attorney. I represent Preferred Living, the applicant on this application. Um, I want to echo what Monica said. Um, 
uh, worked with the area commission, planning department, and all that to uh, try to get a clean application. And preferred living is actually a, their office is in Northwest Civic Association. So as a vested member of the community, we share everything Monica said about um, making the community a better place and being a good neighbor. Great. Thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from council members? See them. Thank you. Uh, there are no other uh, comments from council members. Uh, I move for passage. Second. Thanks, Dan Barroza de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Next, we have ordinance 3125 2023 to amend, its, uh, amend ordinance number 3455 2022, passed December 12, 2022, for property located at 4001 Bryce Road by repealing section 1 and 3 and replacing them with new section 1 and 3 to modify the sub area names and legal descriptions and include modified plan unit development text and plans. Ordinance number 3455-2022 passed December 12th of 2022 to rezone 249.21 acres to allow 916 total residential units within four sub areas. This ordinance modifies legal descriptions by combining sub areas. The total number of proposed units within development remains unchanged at 916 units with 596 detached single unit dwellings in sub area one and multi-unit residential development with 320 units in sub area B. The proposal has approvals from city staff and the Greater Southeast Area Commission. Do my colleagues have questions or comments? Um, seeing none, I first move to amend as submitted to the clerk. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Torrance, Favorini, President Harden. Amend it. Thank you. And finally, move for passage. Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Torrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 3126 2023 to rezone 980 Old Henderson Road, being uh, 0.907 uh, acres located on the north side of the Old Henderson Road and 895 feet east of Kenny Road from C2 Commercial Plan, Commercial District to AR2 Apartment Residential District. Uh, the applicant is requesting that this rezoning to allow a multi unit resident development. A concurrence uh, rezoning has been filed. Um, to permit reduced development standards for landscaping and screening and parking and setback lines, building lines and side yards for a 35 unit apartment complex. The proposal has approvals from city staff, development commission, the Far Northwest Civic Association. Again, we have zoning chair of the Far Northwest Civic Association, Ms. Monica Dorman Tuttle with us, uh, who wanted to be on the record uh, regarding this project. Chair, thank you. Welcome back. Good evening. I just wanted to reiterate the same comments that I had on the other one, just so that it's clear that it is not addressed at any one particular um, application. This is a sister application to the other. Um, we, we support this rezoning. We understand there are substantial variances. Our, our main concern with this one is the connectivity between this application and the other. They're truly not walkable between the two. It would not be safe for residents to walk from one area, even though they are offering amenities from one site to the other. So that applies more to the, the variances than to, act, to the actual zoning, but to reiterate my other points as well. So thank you. Thank you. Any questions for council members? Seeing none, thank you. Um, and again, I appreciate, I mean, this is one of the important things of our, our Air Commission Civic Association, pointing those things out to get these things connected. And again, as our capital budget comes before council every year, these are the kinds of things that we need to take a holistic view to utilize those funds to better connect uh, new neighborhoods to existing ones. So a fair point and something that certainly this council cares about making happen as we, we look at those capital budgets moving forward. Thank you. Um, again, want to offer the opportunity for the applicant to uh, uh, speak to the project as well. Thank you, Chair Jorns, President Harden, members of council. Again, my name is Eric Sartman. I represent the applicant. Um, wanted to reiterate the same comments as before. And uh, as far as connectivity, it is correct that there will be some sharing of amenities between these two projects. Um, we are installing sidewalks uh, as part of our project. And so it'll hopefully start kick kickstarting that connectivity along the old Henderson Road uh, once other properties catch up. Happy, okay. happy answering your questions. Yep. Any uh, questions, council members? Thank you. Uh, seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Thank you. Next, we have ordinance 2967-2023 uh, to rezone 2400 Old Dublin Road, being 12.32 uh, acres located on the north and south sides of Old Dublin Road, 760 plus feet north of uh, Dublin Road from AR3 Apartment Residential District to LR12 Limited Apartment Residential District to AR2 Apartment Residential District. 
Uh, the requested rezoning will permit a multi-unit residential development within the Cory Trails North project. The request is consistent with the Trebu Road uh, area, Trebu Road Roberts area plan recommendation for medium to high density mixed residential and core reuse land uses in this location. A concurrent council variance has been filed to allow a residential parcel to be used for vehicular access and non-accessory parking along the reduced development standard for both sub areas. Um, the request has <coughs> approvals from city staff, Del development commission, and West Side Area Commission. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I first move to amend estimate of the clerk. Second. Thanks, Den Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Amend it. Finally, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Thanks, Den Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. We now move to the council variances. Uh, first, we have ordinance 3007 2023 to get the variance provisions of section 3312.272, parking setback lines, 3312.29, parking space, 3333.18, building lines, 3333.255, perimeter yards, the Columbus City Coast, a property located at 919 Old Henderson Road to allow reduced development standards for an apartment complex in AR1 apartment residential district. Uh, this variance is related to ordinance number uh, 306. 2023 passed earlier tonight in this agenda. The applicant proposed an apartment complex of 69 total units. Variants uh, to reduce the building and parking setbacks uh, require permit yards and parking spaces uh, size are included in this request. Uh, the request includes commitments to a site plan with building elevations that are comparable with the neighborhood and contains a common design elements with neighborhood residential uses consistent with the Olentangy West Area Plan design guidelines. Um, the proposal has approvals from city staff, the Far Northwest Civic Association. And my colleagues, some questions or comments? Seeing none, I first move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Thanks, Den Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Thank you. Next move to adopt the findings of staff, the findings of council. Thanks, Den Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. And finally, move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 3124-2023, Grant of Variance Provisions of Section 3312.21A, Landscaping and Screening, 3312.21B3, Landscaping and Screening, 3312.27, Park and Setback Line, 3333.18, Building Lines, 3333.22, Maximum Side Yard Required, and 3333.23D, Minimum Side Yard Permitted, the Columbus City Coast, with property located at 980 uh, Old Henderson Road to allow apartment building with reduced development standards of the AR2 Apartment Residential District. Um, this variance is related to Ordinance 3126-2023. We just passed early this evening. Uh, the proposed council variance includes a site plan demonstrating a 35-unit apartment building, including the request variances to landscaping, screening, building, parking setback lines, and side yards. The proposal has approvals from city staff and Far Northwest Civic Association. Do my colleagues have questions or comments? Seeing none, I'm first moved to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Burroughs, de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Accept it. Thank you. And next move to adopt the findings of staff the findings of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you. And finally move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 3140-2023 uh, to grant advance provisions of Section 3332.037, R2F Residential District 3312.49, MIM number parking spaces required, 3332.05 A4 area district, lot with, area district lot width requirements, 3332.14 R2F area district requirements, 3332.27 rear yard, the Columbus City Coast for property located uh, 1017 Studer Avenue to allow a two-unit dwelling on one lot with a reduced development standards. The, requ the requested council variance will allow the applicant to construct two single unit dwellings on one lot. The requested, the request, the requested variance uh, reduced parking from four spaces to two. Uh, it also involves lot width, lot area, and rear yard requirements. The proposal has approvals from city staff and the Livingston Avenue Area Commission. We do have one speaker, um, a public speaker, signed up to speak against this ordinance. So at this time, we'll hear a staff presentation. Mr. Dietrich, the floor is yours. President Hardin, Chair Dorans, members of council, the site consists of an undeveloped lot in the R2F residential district. The requested council variance will allow the applicant to construct two single unit dwellings on one lot. A council variance is required because the R2F district prohibits two single unit dwellings on one lot. The request includes variances to reduce parking from four to two spaces, lot width, lot area, and rear yard requirements. 
The site is located within the planning boundaries of the near, near south side plan, which recommends medium high mixed residential land uses at this location, which is generally consistent with the proposal. The request is consistent with the existing residential development pattern of the neighborhood and will not add incompatible uses to the area and therefore city departments recommend approval. Thank you, Mr. Dietrich. Uh, any questions from members for the department at this time? Uh, seeing none, we will invite our public speaker uh, on this ordinance to come up, Ms. Sasha Harris. Ms. Harris, welcome to council. Uh, when you get to the podium, I'll swear you in real quick since this is a council variance. Uh, please, please raise your right hand. Uh, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth and nothing but the truth as you shall answer in a pains of penalty of perjury? If so, please say I do. I do. Floor is yours, ma'am. Cool. Thank you all for allowing me to speak today. Um, I actually live right next door to this empty lot that is going to be um, developed. And I'm actually excited about the fact that it's going to be developed, but my concern is that it is has, it's going to be two different dwellings. So as you think about the space right now, it's really tight. And so there's no other house on the street that has that tight of a space. And then knowing it's close to my home, it just now requires us like it's it's very extremely tight um one i think neighborhood wise it's gonna make it not look as nice as it does now and it's on the corner lot as well across from a park and i feel like right now we have very beautification within our community and that will change with that also knowing that it's two dwellings those are additional tenants in both spaces um, that will be a lot of traffic between that but i also don't know how they would fit the four spaces so large concern from there and then as I think about just it's an older area and it's being developed which is exciting but I don't even know if that space can handle the pressure from all the other facility things that come with building a home um, right next to mine and I don't know if that's going to then cause construed things in in my home as well so I am against it for that reason not necessarily against something being built there but just not having the two homes I think there's really only space for one and that what was there before. Any questions from members for Ms. Harris? Sina, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, we'll now hear from the applicant, uh, Ms. Emily Long uh, Rayfield from Healthy Homes. Welcome back to council. Uh, I'll need to swear again since this is a council variance, so please uh, raise your right hand. <coughs> do, you, do you swear from the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, as you shall answer in the pains of penalty of perjury? If so, please say I do. I do. The floor is yours. Great. Good evening, council members. Thank you for hearing our application tonight. Um, again, my name is Emily Long Rayfield, and I'm the lead development manager at Healthy Homes at Nationwide Children's Hospital. Um, I just want to thank you all for your support, not just of ours, but other affordable housing initiatives, um, as discussed earlier this evening. Um, we deeply appreciate it. The application in front of you is one of two accessory dwelling units that Healthy Homes hopes to build in 2024. Um, we hope that these accessory dwelling units help to provide more diverse affordable housing options. Um, and then just in response to some of the comments, there were some requests from the planning division on extra landscaping and screening of this. And I don't know if we can go to the site plan maybe. Thank you. Um, you'll notice that we have some extra street trees added and we don't typically do any landscape buffering on our parking pads, but we did add this in um, knowing that it is a corner lot uh, as the speaker discussed. And I'm happy to answer any specific questions council may have. Are there questions from council members? Seeing that, thank you. Thank you all. Um, well, I, I want to thank Ms. Harris for coming down here tonight. Um, as our city continues to grow, certainly uh, these are going to be more difficult discussions when we look to add more housing in places that um, maybe used to only have single housing units. Um, you know, th this is certainly Healthy Homes has certainly been a partner of the city for for some time now, and um, I believe you know does their work in a very responsible and uh, way to be respectful of the community around them. Uh, and again, as as our city grows, we're, we're only going to be able to add um, to that population growth if, in fact, we're seeing higher density, particularly in in areas. Uh, and this is sort of a prime example of what low uh, increases in density sort of looks like. Uh, I don't know if council, any other council members have any comments before. No, I would just add, I mean, I think that you summed it up. We appreciate your, your advocacy, and the truth is, 
to uh, Chair's point, um, many of our neighborhoods were going to be welcoming in new new neighbors, and um, so and I think. Um, through meeting with the developer ahead of time and having those conversations, we can kind of get up uh, ahead of uh, upstream for some of your potential concerns. Um, but the, the truth is, this is this is how we grow. We'll be be uh, infilling in those desirable neighborhoods, and so um, while encouraging those developers to um, make sure that uh, that that uh, that relationships are built so that these new neighbors can really become part of the neighborhood. And so just grateful for your advocacy. We hear you uh, and we'll look forward to just being in complete con continual partnership with you. And as things come up, we have our neighborhood liaisons and other things that can work with the neighborhood to make sure um, that, that you are taken care of as a, as a resident, a uh, long-term resident in the neighborhood. Thank you, Council President. And I would also just add, uh, it is also appreciative that folks are not here tonight just saying no. They're concerned about something being different in their neighborhood, not necessarily being against housing. And that's something that I, I think is refreshing and, and appreciative by this body, uh, that it's a concern of, hey, this looks different than what I thought it would look like. And, that, and that's a fair question. I think that's a fair critique of something, you know, literally being built next door to you. You never thought that's the kind of thing that would be. Um, again, to Council President's point, uh, we're growing. We're going to see more of things like this. And uh, again, I would expect Healthy Homes to do the right thing to, to work with the neighbors during the construction development process uh, to make sure that those concerns are met and, and dealt with. Uh, that doesn't mean folks are always going to like what happens, but I think certainly in this instance, uh, I truly believe that the organization that's engaged here uh, will be respectful and, and helpful as those things move forward. So with that, I would like to um, first move to ex ex accept the entire step report into evidence as an exhibit. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Accept it. Next, I move to adopt the finance of staff, the finance of council. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Uh, adopt it. And finally, move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. And finally, we have Ordinance 2968 2023 to grant advance provisions of Section 3333.0. 025 AR2 apartment residential district uses 3312.49 C minimum number of parking spaces required 3312.21 B3 landscaping and screening 3333.16 fronting and 3333.255 perimeter yard for the Columbus City Coast are properly located at 2400 Old Dublin Road to allow vehicular access and non accessory parking reduced development standards in the AR2 apartment residential district to repeal ordinance number 1943 2022 as applicable to sub area F passed July 25th 2022. Uh, this council variance will allow a four, uh, 436 unit apartment complex on with no frontage on a public street and reduced, reduced parking and perimeter yard and vehicle access and non accessory overflow parking. Staff recognizes that the proposal is a reduction in intensity from what was previously allowed, but is still consistent with the land use recommendations of the Treby Roberts area plan um, and aids in the redevelopment of a previ previous quarry property. Uh, the proposal has approval from city staff and the West Side Area Commission. Do I have my colleagues any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Accept it. Next, I move to adopt the finance of staff, the finance of council. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. Finally, uh, next, I move to amend as submitted to the clerk. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Uh, amended. And finally, move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you, Council President. That is all we have in the tonight's zoning agenda. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. See no further business come for Council. Is there a motion to adjourn? So Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. The meeting is adjourned.